two successful rocket launches occurred within a mere four-hour window. A remarkable feat demonstrated by SpaceX on St. Patrick's Day last Friday. The achievement is truly impressive and has left many wondering how Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, reacted to this incredible accomplishment. The world is in awe of this remarkable achievement, and today's episode of Great SpaceX will delve into the details of this historic event and more. So join us as we explore the exciting world of space exploration and the groundbreaking work over at SpaceX. You might be forgiven for thinking a touch of deja vu hit the Space Coast on Friday as a six times flown Falcon 9 roared uphill from stored Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Spaceport Station at 7.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, right on the opening of its 38-minute launch window. Laden with a pair of geostationary-bound satellites for Luxembourg-based telecommunications provider SES, it was SpaceX's second mission of St. Patrick's Day, establishing a new record of only four hours between a pair of Falcon 9 flights. It improved on the seven-hour turnaround between Falcon 9 launches accomplished by SpaceX last October. This is an unprecedented yet impressive record that makes SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk tweet out, Congrats to SpaceX team for launching two rockets within four hours. On that day, another booster, the eight times used B-1071, rose from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, carrying a batch of Starlink Internet Communications satellites. Launched at 12.26 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time, B-1071 powered the 70-meter Falcon 9 uphill for the opening two and a half minutes of the mission, before separating and pirouetting to an on-point touchdown on the expansive deck of the West Coast-based autonomous spaceport drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, situated offshore in the Pacific Ocean. With B-1071 gone, the Falcon 9's second stage executed a standard six-minute burn of its Merlin 1D Plus vacuum engine to deliver the 52-satellite Starlink payload totaling around 16,100 kilograms into orbit. Deployment occurred some 15 minutes after liftoff and the satellites will be positioned at an orbital inclination of 70 degrees, at an altitude of 570 kilometers. It marked the ninth Starlink mission of 2023, which has seen 440 of these flat-packed internet communications satellites emplaced into orbit this year. All said and done, 4,103 production design Starlinks have flown on 76 dedicated flights since May of 2019. Starlink now facilitates high-speed and low-latency internet provision across 50 sovereign nations and international markets, spanning North and South America, Europe, Asia, Oceania, and Africa. Last month alone, Iceland, Rwanda, and the Philippines, Starlink's first client in Southeast Asia, officially signed up to the network. Attention then turned to Florida and the Cape's SLC-40, which was gearing up to host its 10th Falcon 9 launch of 2023. The five times used B-1069 core, which flew most recently last month, was laden with the dual-stacked SES-18 and 19 geostationary satellites, flying on behalf of Luxembourg-based telecommunications provider SES again. B-1069 entered SpaceX's burgeoning booster fleet back in December of 2021, almost losing after her first flight in a hair-raising ASDS touchdown she underwent substantial repairs, including a brand new suite of Merlin 1D Plus first stage engines, and went on to fly three more missions in 2022. She lofted 54 Starlinks to orbit in August, followed by UTELSAT's Hotbird 13F geostationary bound communications satellite in mid October, and 40 broadband satellites early in December for London, England based OneWeb. A fifth flight just last month saw her deliver another Starlink batch on the Falcon 9 fleet's 200th fully successful launch. Friday's opening launch window was set to open at 7.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time and last 38 minutes with a backup opportunity opening at the same time Saturday evening and extending for 37 minutes. A launch at the start of Friday's first opportunity thus promised to set a new SpaceX record of 4 hours and 12 minutes between two Falcon 9 flights, eclipsing the current personal best 
which was set last October on the 5th. Between the Florida launch of Dragon Endurance and Crew 5's Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Wakata, and Anna Kakina, heading uphill for a five-month stay on the International Space Station, otherwise known as the ISS, and a Vandenberg Starlink mission seven hours and ten minutes later. Efforts to break this record have already been attempted earlier in 2023. Hopes of launching pairs of back-to-back -back missions 35 minutes apart in January and 53 minutes apart last month ultimately came to naught, thanks to schedule difficulties, technical troubles, and poor weather. In readiness for that launch, the autonomous spaceport drone ship, just read the instructions, put to sea out of Port Canaveral last Sunday and was positioned about 660 kilometers offshore in the Atlantic Ocean. Weather conditions for Friday were expected to be around 80% favorable, according to the 45th Weather Squadron at Patrick Space Force Base, but were predicted to deteriorate markedly to only 35% favorable for Saturday's backup launch attempts. As the next cold front approaches Florida from the west, High pressure will retreat into the Atlantic. The front will be draped over the Florida Panhandle by the evening, noted the 45th. This setup will bring southerly winds, shifting southeasterly and becoming gusty in the late afternoon, and evening behind the sea breeze. Potential showstoppers on Friday night included a risk posed by near-surface liftoff winds, but as the cold front makes its way into east-central Florida on Saturday, the 45th explained that weather conditions will deteriorate with a high likelihood of showers, storms, and increased cloud cover. Yet, Mother Nature was not one to be trifled with. Falcon 9 Vertical at SLC-40, SpaceX tweeted at 5 p.m. EDT, then cautioned, Teams are keeping an eye on winds at the launch site. Taking full advantage of this favorable weather, B-1069 roared aloft at 7.38 p.m. EDT, snatching a new launch-to-launch -launch record by flying only 4 hours and 12 minutes after her predecessor B-1071 had left Vandenberg. Eight minutes later, blackened and scorched from her sixth ascent and high-energy re-entry, she alighted smoothly on the deck of the drone ship wrapping up SpaceX's 6th launch of March and 18th mission of 2023. In the meantime, Falcon 9's second stage continued to push uphill, her Merlin 1D Plus vacuum engine executing a pair of burns to deliver the SES-18 and 19 twins to their drop-off point for geosynchronous transfer orbit. The satellites were set to be deployed 5 minutes apart with the upper satellite in the stack, 18, expected to drift off into the inky blackness of space at 32 minutes after launch, and the lower satellite, 19, due to do likewise at 37 minutes. They would employ their onboard propulsion assets to position themselves on their operational orbits, with SES-18 targeting 103.05 degrees west longitude by June, and 19, some 134.9 degrees west. Built by Northrop Grumman Corporation, the near-identical satellites will leverage the capabilities of the Geostar 3 bus and carry 10 C-brand transponders to furnish digital television broadcasting to nearly 120 million homes. These two satellites are part of a group of four SES birds of which the first pair, 20 and 21, rode a United Launch Alliance Atlas V to orbit early last fall to spearhead an ongoing campaign to accelerate SESC brand clearing plan and meet a Federal Communications Commission objective to free up spectrum for 5G terrestrial wireless services. SpaceX was selected back in June of 2020 as the launch services provider for the SES-18 and 19 mission. With six launches completed in the last two weeks, SpaceX looks ahead to as many as three more flights in the coming days. This might possibly wind up March as its first eight launch or even nine launch month on record. A pair of East Coast Starlink missions are provisionally slated a week or so apart in the final 10 days of the launch followed by the first launch of the Tranche Zero of the Transport and Tracking Layer for the Space Development Agency from Vandenberg. That may make March also become the first month to see three Falcon 9 launches from the West Coast. Tranche Zero will form the basis of an eventual constellation of 300 to 500 low-orbiting experimental satellites to furnish ground-based warfighters with assured, resilient, low-latency military data and connectivity worldwide together with wide field-of-view infrared sensors for infrared missile tracking, 
And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.